Hi everyone, in this video we will talk about tetanus immunization according to Australian guidelines. So we will start with the question, what is tetanus? Tetanus is caused by a bacterium found in soil. This bacteria can enter wounds and produce a neurotoxin. This neurotoxin acts on the central nervous system to cause muscle rigidity with painful spasms. So tetanus containing vaccines are used to prevent disease by making antibodies that bind to the toxin produced by this bacteria rather than binding to the bacteria itself. So now let's move on to who should get the vaccine. Routine vaccination should be given to infants and children and adolescents. Routine booster vaccination in adults, including travelers to countries where health services are difficult to access. We should also give it as post-exposure prophylaxis in people with a tetanus-prone wound. We will clarify this later on. And vaccination uh, of people who have missed doses of tetanus-containing vaccine. So how do we get this vaccine? Tetanus-containing vaccines are only available in Australia as combination vaccines. This means that they include other antigens such as pertussis and diphtheria, which is called the DTPA vaccine, which is short for diphtheria, tetanus and acellular pertussis. The tetanus vaccine is recommended for children at 2 months, 4 months, 6 months, 18 months, 4 years, and adolescents at 11 to 13 years. This is according to the Australian Immunization Programme. Booster doses are recommended for all adults at 50 years and 65 years if it has been more than 10 years since the last dose was given. The tetanus vaccine is also recommended every 10 years for travellers to countries where health services are difficult to access. Travellers with a high risk of tetanus prone wounds are recommended to be vaccinated every 5 years. So the DTPA vaccine is recommended as a single dose in each pregnancy, ideally early in the third trimester. This helps prevent pertussis in pregnant women and their newborns. As for breastfeeding women, it is safe to receive DT or DTPA vaccines. So what is a tetanus prone wound? It is any wound other than a clean minor cut. In fact, tetanus may occur after a seemingly trivial injury, such as from a rose thorn. Antibiotics do not prevent or treat tetanus, however, they can prevent other bacterial infections. All tetanus prone wounds must be disinfected and, where appropriate, have surgical treatment. So how do we decide if we should give a patient uh, coming to us with a wound, uh, a tetanus vaccine or immunoglobulins? This depends on three factors, the history of tetanus vaccination, the time since last dose and the type of wound. So if a person comes with three or more doses of uh, vaccination, of previous vaccination and the time since last dose was less than five years and he comes with a clean minor cut, then we, we shouldn't. We don't need to vaccinate. But if the person comes with uh, other types of wounds, 
then we should give IgG if the person is immunodeficient. If the person has had three or more doses of a vaccination and it's been five to ten years and he comes with a clean minor wound, then we don't need to give anything. But if he comes with other types of wounds, then we should vaccinate and give immunoglobulins if the person is immunodeficient. And if the person has had three or more doses and it's been more than 10 years since the last dose and he comes with a clean minor cut, then we should vaccinate. But if he comes with an another type of wound, then we should vaccinate and give immunoglobulin if the person is immunodeficient. If he's not, we don't need to give immunoglobulins. If, if he's had less than three doses or uncertain of history of vaccination and he comes with a clean minor wound, then we should vaccinate. But if he comes with other types of wounds, then we should vaccinate and give immunoglobulins. So this is the only case where we give immunoglobulins to a healthy person. The only absolute contraindications to tetanus containing vaccines are Anaphylaxis after a previous dose of any tetanus containing vaccine or anaphylaxis after any component of a tetanus containing vaccine. If a person has a tetanus prone wound and has previously had a severe adverse event after tetanus vaccination, consider other measures including tetanus immunoglobulins. So now moving on to adverse events. Mild discomfort or pain at the injection site is common after receiving a tetanus containing vaccine. This can last for a few days. Uncommon general adverse events after receiving a DT vaccine include headache, lethargy, malaise, myalgia, and fever. And very rare Adverse events are anaphylaxis, urticaria, and peripheral neuropathy. Bacterial neuritis may occur after receiving a tetanus-containing vaccine. This is inflammation of a nerve in the arm causing weakness or numbness. The estimated excess risk is approximately 0.5 to 1 in 100,000 doses in, in adults. Specific adverse events after receiving a combination vaccine containing both tetanus and pertussis are extensive limb swelling, febrile convulsions, hypotonic hyporesponsive episode. Adverse reactions to a single dose of DTPA vaccine are similar whether a person receives the vaccine shortly after or at longer interval after a previous DT vaccine. So let's get into the details of the nature of the disease. Tennis is caused by the bacterium Clostridium titani or C. titani. C. titani is a motile, non-capsulated, gram-positive rod that forms endospores. These spores are found in manured soil and can enter wounds. Once in wounds, the bacteria can grow anaerobically. So the C. titani or Clostridium titani produces a potent protein toxin that has two components. The first one is tetanospasmin, which is a neurotoxin. The second one is tetanolysin, which is a hemolysin. These toxins cause the symptoms of tetanus. The incubation period is often 3 to 21 days. Generally, a shorter incubation period is associated with a more heavily contaminated wound. 
a more severe disease and a worse prognosis. As for the symptoms of tetanus, generalized tetanus is the most common form of the disease. It is characterized by increased muscle tone and generalized spasms. Early symptoms and signs of tetanus include increased tone in the masseter muscles, the trismus or lockjaw, dysphagia, and stiffness or pain in the neck shoulder and back muscles. Some patients develop generalized muscle spasms that are paroxysmal, violent and painful. During generalized spasms the person may have reduced ventilation, apnea or laryngospasms. The person may be febrile although many have no fever. The mental state is unimpaired Sudden cardiac arrest sometimes occurs, but its basis is unknown. So the complications from tetanus are pneumonia, fractures, muscle rupture, deep vein thrombosis or thrombophlebitis, pulmonary emboli, decubitus ulcers, and rhabdomyolysis and death can result from tetanus and the causes are respiratory failure hypertension hypotension or cardiac arrhythmia And last but not least, tetanus is a notifiable disease in all states and territories in Australia. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and share it to support me and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.